Welcome everyone to this sacred conversation. And I am so excited because having just interviewed Alison, who will be coming up in a few months time, she decided, came through to her that she would interview me. And initially I thought, oh my goodness, interview me on my own channel. But I really loved the idea of her doing that. And I just love how she holds space and who she's. So thank you, Alison, for giving me the opportunity to share my story. Well, it's my pleasure, Chantelle, because really I thought, you know, you are doing this and interviewing so many people listening to their story, but you have such an amazing story that needs to be shared. And I thought, if you haven't done it already, I would be honoured to be the person who talks to you and interviews you about your story because there's so much gold in what you have to share and there's so much, um, you know, you turn pain into adversity, into, uh, you turn adversity into victory. You really turned it all around and made such amazing leaps and bounds in your own life that we really need to hear it. Thank you. So that's what I thought we need to do that. Thank you. And I love that. And, you know, thank you for reflecting back. So I think it's something really important and why I love doing or interviews and now being interviewed is it's reflecting back to each other how far we have come, what we have come through, giving others hope that there is life after whether it be trauma or an experience, yeah. whatever it might be, there is life. Yeah, definitely. We just wow. have to make sure that, you know, that we give ourselves, the, I always say pain brings a gift. So give yourself the, the the gift of whatever pain has brought you because you've been through all of that. Now let's turn it into victory. Let's make it work for you and for everybody else who can learn from it, who can get some inspiration from it, who can realise, you know what, I've been through something similar or maybe I haven't been through anything as bad. And look at what she's done. Look at how she is now. Well, there's hope for me. Yes. Yes. And I love that. Thank you. And I think, as you said, what was the word you used? Turn it into victory. And I like that. Because the other word I'm adversity. using now, pardon? Turn adversity into victory. I like that. Because it is adverse. And in, sometimes when you're in it, you don't realize how adverse it is. Yeah. Do you? You know, because you think, oh, it wasn't that bad. So in my case... It was, it had been actually um, childhood stuff that I'd been going through. But when I had a car accident, I didn't realise, it was, car accident itself was, it gave me a severe whiplash injury, absolutely. But I didn't realise at the time when I stood, I can tell you exactly now when I froze, I understand the words now, and went into complex, complex PTSD, because I didn't get that at the time either, because this is all just new. This is 14 years ago. So yeah. what year are we now? 2023. So anyone who listens to this down the track, we didn't have the same information or access to information. True. So if you think about it, we struggled. So I remember, and I had severe, severe, as I said to you, um, um, with brash. It was just terrible. But I didn't understand why then I had the depression, the flashbacks, and it brought everything up, all the childhood nightmares I used to have. And I went into terrible shame. Because I couldn't understand, my accent wasn't that bad. Yes, my car was written off. Yes, this, this, and this. But why wasn't I coming back? Because what you do is you look at others. You compare yourself. Yeah. You know, I had a beautiful friend. That's how I met my partner. She'd been in a horrific accident compared to me, you know, and horrific injuries. And you know what she said to me one day, which I loved? She said, it's your experience. It is your experience. So remember that. Exactly. And if I could just add to that, you know, it's really futile to compare the only person you can compare yourself to is you. Because I was saying to somebody the other day, we can talk about 10 on a scale of one to five, but you know, my my 10 might be your five yes. or whatever. So there's no way to really have a subjective understanding of what someone else is going through when it's an emotional and psychological pain. Exactly, so, exactly. Thank you. And I'm now going to add spiritual pain because you don't realize, and this is part of the work that I do now, is because yeah. I'm a trauma informed coach as well as, you know, in, in holistic psych psychotherapist. But coming back to what you're saying, we're so busy focusing on the physical, the mental, and emotional because you do, and most of it is mental. You do a lot of talk therapy. That's what I needed to do. But what we then don't realize is that we are still not connected to our bodies. And I'm only just really learning over the last couple of years or few years is my spirit needs a home to come back to, to feel yes. safe. I love that. You know? mm. And to feel safe and to create this beautiful wholeness and this completeness 
and to be able to work with my intuition. So it's about connecting with your body at a whole different level because you can do all this healing. So I was trying to work out, again, the words to use. So the healing for me, so these are my words. So the healing was going through all the mess with my trauma, my psycho psychologist and then massage mm -hmm. and everything else that I did with it. Because for a few years, I couldn't even do Reiki, meditation, nothing, because it kept triggering me, okay? And I knew that instinctively. Yeah. And then I could slowly start coming back in. Now I've, got, I've lost completely what I was saying with this. Alison, can you, so this is what also can happen. I get excited and I go off on a and I'm, I'm so enthralled in, in, in what you're saying that I'm also kind of just following you and not sort of thinking about what happened before. We were talking about, you know, the spirit needing to come back into the body right. because right. we get, you know, distracted by the mental uh, or, the, or yeah. the physical without the spirit, the, the soul kind of part of our body. That's it. Thank you for that. And what I mean about being in contact with your body, I was totally in pain body. So I was in my body, but in pain. But what I couldn't do for a long time was actually feel into my body. So that was all the healing. So I did all the healing that side. So now it's like, who am I now? Is there life after trauma? So now someone used the beautiful word. Now you begin to create yourself. Ooh, you begin to work out who do I want to be? Who do I want to become? Yeah. You know, and there's excitement as well as trepidation in there because, you know, it's like when you're going through such a tough time and whether it be through a death, illness, whatever it might be, it's your own experience, okay? So there's yeah. so much around trauma. So for anyone who's listening, I do have how trauma affects you and what it's about because we need to understand what trauma means. We need yeah, to be okay yeah. about using the word trauma, yes. you know? And again, I've gone off track. I get so excited, Alison. Oh! <laughs> You're keeping me honest, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> so we're talking about, again, coming into our body and oh, just right. connecting with that. And it's about creating who you want to be. Right. Thank and you. while we've got this, I also wanted to add, so it's creating who we want to be, but it's also discovering who we really are and putting the two together. That's it. That's it. Exactly. It is. And someone I interviewed bumps. used it as, sorry, say that again. I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah, oh, you and me both. This is why I love this conversation. So thank you for allowing me to bounce off each other. I love it. Yeah. And one girl used, because she used to work in a mine site here in Australia, and she used it as excavation. We're excavating now, you know. So each time we go, we go another level. And instead of yeah. seeing it as, I used to see it as shameful. Oh, my God, I've got to do more healing. How much more do I need to do? Because I also got stuck on that. Yes. Because I was so lacking. I didn't realize, again, I was missing the spirit and the soul being here. So now I go, oh, my God, like you said, it's basically discovering who we are. Someone said, they say a while ago, or hearing about, you you know, who you become who you're meant to be and rediscover. I don't know who I was. I was born into violence. I was born <laughs> into this trauma, developmental trauma, they call it. I get that now. I had no idea who it was. I didn't know that I was loving, kind, fun, adventurous, intelligent. You know, I didn't know that. So I didn't know how that's to. It. Loving, yeah. Yeah, that's it. And, you know, so I didn't know how to just rediscover myself or become who I'm meant to be. I didn't know who I was meant to be. Yeah. And some people get ad addicted to their shame and to their pain because they keep wanting to talk about it rather than move through it. So, and I think sometimes it's because they either haven't come across somebody who can show them how you can move through it or they're getting what we call secondary gain. Like when they're sort of going through their, 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 their pain and their, their drama of their trauma, they're getting attention. They're loving that because they felt very shameful to the point they had to hide away. But now they're finding that they're now people are wanting to talk to them or ask them stuff or say, wow, look at you, you've come through that. But what they're not realizing is they're perpetuating it. So we really need to be willing to let that go and then work through it and discover what's uh, who we are on the other side of that, which you've done so beautifully. Thank you. And that's really beautifully put because who are we on the other side of that? Oh, my God, I love that because that is so true. Who are we? And I think the other thing you said a bit earlier and the way I see it also when I've been doing the, some Buddhist reading, I'm not by no means a Buddhist, but I love some of their readings. I never understood why suffering, you had to suffer to create happiness. But you said something earlier. And I kept, because we do, we need to sit in the pain and the discomfort. Because if we don't sit in that pain and discomfort, we're not going to move through. We're not going to allow, have it move. So this is going back to being in your body. Because we don't realize that we're frozen. Yeah. This is what where trauma comes from, or, you know, we freeze. 
And we haven't had the capacity to move because we're so overwhelmed. Now, again, these are my words from my understanding yes, and my own experience. So I didn't realize that I had still was frozen in my body still, the, the memory of it the, in the DNA. So even though I thought, oh, yeah, I've done all this therapy. Oh, yes, I should be over. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was carrying on. I was back to functioning. Yeah. I actually wasn't functioning to my fullest. Yes. So there were still things in my body that needed to be released. Mm. You know, and again, society puts upon us, or we take from society, whichever way you want to look at it, you know, how we're meant to be. And there's no meant to be. It's how we want to be. It's how we feel fulfilled to be. It's how we feel authentic in being back in connection with our mind, body, and soul. Love, again, connection. So again, so whether you have connection this way, connection this way, whatever way, because it is about connecting and and then enjoying. So in a way, I'm now enjoying finding out who I am. I mean, there are still painful moments, rest assured. That doesn't, doesn't mean I still don't trigger into shame and all that. But it's like now I'm loving stepping into the unknown. So, you know, from when I did this, so three years ago is when we went into lockdown. That was all the first of the stuff. It actually was the thing that gave me permission to actually step yeah. into the unknown, gave me permission to let go of everything that I knew and come into the space that I'm sitting in now. No one, no one needed to know I was here. I was completely safe. Yeah. Yeah. The government had given me permission not to go out, yeah. which surprised me. So when we were able to go out again, I went into anxiety, which also surprised me. Because, But I needed that deep healing time because I pushed and pushed and pushed. Because like you said, um, I pushed all my life, but after the act, I kept pushing, will people like me? I'm a businesswoman. Will people re relate to me? Will I be pro uh, professional when I'm bursting into tears? Yeah. I mean, massive panic attacks. You know, I can't get off the couch. Yeah. You know? So I, so I kept pushing and striving. And that's part of a trauma response. Okay. And it's all or nothing. So I'm all in or I'm nothing. So I'm learning to find that, that beautiful space in between where, so that's again, learning boundaries. Yeah. So coming back to, I stepped into the unknown. Sorry. Because I knew I needed to just start to let go of life, the trauma, everything that I knew, I had to let it go. So family history, generational history, everything. And, of course, I thought it'd take a lot quicker. <laughs> it's been three years and I'm just coming out to another, out of the end of that thing. The best yeah. thing I did, Alison, best thing I did. Yeah. Well, you know... One of my, my coaches and mentors says, you know, you're either green and growing or you're ripe and rotting. And to me, that's all about the longer you live or, you know, as you live, you will learn and you will grow, which doesn't mean that you're just going to improve. With, it's not always going to be sort of sunshine and, and you know, whatever, or roses. There will be pain. That's part of the human experience. And whatever we're going through, again, just helps us to grow bigger and better and we use our past, you know, experiences and our past lessons to help us to to travel through the new lesson. Exactly. And I realise it's my foundation, you know. And what I also learned was my I'm no longer my past, but my past will always be part of me because it is. Absolutely. Love I it. no longer de deny it. Yeah. It's made you who you are. And who you are, if I might say so, is an absolutely beautiful soul. Thank you. You know. I absolutely love you. And I was actually going to say this when we started, but you and I have never met in person. We've only met online. We met through like a business coaching group. And right from the start, Chantelle, you always appeared to me to be a very, um, I've lost the words now, a very calm presence who's at peace with herself, who speaks her truth. You're not loud, but you're very um, self-assured. Thank you. And it's a very beautiful energy to be in. And when you speak, people listen is because you're not kind of loud and shrill, but you're soft and gentle. Thank you. And impressive, impactful. That was impactful. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just going to take a moment because that's. And what? Thank you. Because what I'm, again, I'm going to use this as a beautiful example of. Part of me, thank you for the heart, yes. Part of me wants to go, oh, no. You know, that's that. You can't, we don't know how to accept compliments. We don't accept, because this is what we want to hear. It's like you said earlier, we want validation. Um, so often we share our, our trauma. But it's also, thank you. 
it's accepting because yes, what you're what you're sharing with me, and this is the work that we both do, but this is the work that I do, is how can we reflect back to someone else, whether it be a friend or a client, their magnificence when they just feel their whole life is crumbled down around them. Yet you can still see that magic, that moment, that diamond, whatever it is you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And that is what holding space is all about. That is what empathy, understanding, because you don't need to understand each other's stories. This is what we spoke about earlier. You and I have had completely different stories. Absolutely. Completely different upbringings, you know, and that's why I'm excited when yours does schedule to come up so everyone do watch out for Alison's because her story is amazing. This is what we do. We're sharing our stories. But where we come together is we have those emotions. Yeah. That's where we come from, that understanding, from that heartfelt space. Yeah. You know. Beautiful. So it's just taking, it, you know, it's beautiful. And, again, it's beautiful to hear, again, when you hear someone's progress, your perception of me, because for years, because I was struggling away from my childhood and dad's violence and the anger and I always, and I was always told that I was too loud, I was too this, I was too that, and I had an aggression in my voice. Because sometimes I did use aggression because that was my way of protecting me, not understanding that, and to get yeah. what I needed. So for you to say that to me just warms my heart beyond measure because I now know that that is, what's, that is who I am. I'm not the other person. That was a person that I created or was created for me to survive yeah. in this world that constantly felt unsafe, right into adulthood, but I didn't realise to what extent it was driving me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm having a moment now. Absolutely. I'm, I'm all teary. I can barely see you. Um, now, I know that you know this work, but for anybody who's listening who doesn't know about this work, so what Chantal has just explained about her little girl who had to speak up and be who she really wasn't, even though, you know, people like Chantal and I do work with inner child, you can actually do it for yourself. You can go back and talk to your, your inner child, your little girl, however old she is, and just ask yourself, how old was I? And just be open to whatever message comes in, whatever age comes in is the right age. And just go and talk to her. And tell her that you've come to talk to her, that say that you're sorry that it's been so long that you weren't able to come, but you're here now. And you want her to tell you everything that she wants to tell you. And you're there to tell her everything that she wants to hear. Ask her what she wants to hear. Ask her if she'd like a cuddle. She might not. Ask her if she wants to be hugged or whatever. Um, and one of the things I always do towards the end, I always say, Take her and put her in a heart, in your heart, yeah. and tell her you'll always be together and you're there for each other. That she has made you stronger because of who she was, how she protected you, what she went through, and you're here now for her to protect her forever. She'll never, ever be alone, and together you will do life looking after each other. Beautiful, and thank you for that because, interestingly enough, and I'm just going to stand up for a moment because... I'm learning so hoping a whole new way of doing writing and journaling and connecting with my child because interestingly enough that we bring this up, my little I've got an image of my little three and a half year old and um, that I've been needing to work with. So like you said, it's about bringing her into your heart, being able to hug her. And for me, it's also creating completion and my soul and spirit are coming back. But I hadn't done this for a long time, is working with my non-dominant hand. Because that wow. was another way of connecting with your child. Absolutely. So I started doing that just recently. So see, even despite all the you know years, we can just keep going. But I had actually enjoyed it. Then it came yeah. through to start doing artwork, which I did. And then to use my non-dominant hand. Now using charcoal is easier, except for the writing. So you see, this is how I started to express myself yeah. in a whole different way. Because I now have the yeah. courage, the excitement to break through, to go back into adventure. So, again, it's like we said earlier, who do I want to be? I always thought I wasn't an artist. So, again, what is an artist? What is a successful person? What is a yeah. financial success? What are we really saying here is, is you. What is of value to you? Yeah. 
you know, how do you want to express yourself? How do you want to dress? How do you want to be? How do you want to have your hair? All those things come into play. It's nothing to do with vanity. It's no. to, do, to do with, oh, my God, I love long hair. I love short hair or I love wearing colour. I love, mm. I want to go back into adventure. No, I don't. I want to be at home reading my book or being with my family. So, again, then you realise what's important for you. Yeah. And at this point, I want to say something that you sort of triggered in my head, and I actually wrote it down uh, so that I didn't forget, is when you were talking about that we, you, you, the government gave you permission to be at home with COVID. And I think quite often what we need to do is give ourselves permission to just be who we are. And if we don't want to get out of bed, you know, that's fine, as long as it doesn't become a problem where, we, where we're avoiding the world and we're avoiding life or we're avoiding pain. Because otherwise, you know, there's no joy in that. It's just about being completely joyful in your life. And mm -hmm. sometimes you need to give yourself permission to just be whatever it is. It might be to step out and, you know, wear something that you wouldn't normally have worn. I was actually telling a story the other day about when, you know, I was in my early 50s and my mother, God bless her, um, and I bought, I love bright colours, so I bought this really leery orange jacket to wear to work because that's what I used to wear to work, you know, jackets and trousers and a top so I said to my mum do you think I'm too old to wear this and she said yes and I thought okay I respect her opinion and I thought you know what I just didn't like it and I'm still going to keep it because it might be Larry I might sort of you know be looking like mutton dressed as lamb but it makes me feel good and so it's giving yourself that kind of permission to do what makes your heart sink it doesn't matter what the world thinks it makes me happy exactly and thank you for pointing that out because it was a really valid point that you said because it is about us giving permission. But I thought I had been over the years. So this is this is where this other layer comes in. This yeah. is where, because I look back and thought, what was it about, you know, going into lockdown that I needed that? So what I needed was that real extra, like I had to have someone else's authority mm. permission to go, actually, you can now let go completely. Yeah. But yes, it is. It's actually about you giving yourself permission. But sometimes... If someone else needs to give it to you, someone you trust. Now, in this case, you don't always trust the government, but it was like, okay, I've got six. Oh, we only had six weeks here in Perth and then a few days down the track. But it was enough to go, okay, okay. Yeah. You know, and then that in that case, because I know we're sort of coming a little bit to the end um, well, soon, what I then did was I practised what I preach. So I preach what I practise. So this is what someone gave to me years ago, a male, yeah. interestingly enough. So like... But I really sat down and write, what would I say and do with a client if this was her or him? Yeah. So I used insight meditation where you go in, it's about it being in stillness. It gives you insight. So I take you through a beautiful process of connecting with your body to get start to get insights. Where is it in your body? So I use that. Then we go through EFT tapping if we need to. We do that. Then I can send Reiki to Akashic Record reading. So I did all that stuff on myself. Right, what does it mean? I use my crystals you know, tune into those and a lot of writing and journey. And now, as I mentioned to you, my visual journal. So these are all the things that I bring in and the way I work is, and that's why I call it like divine psychotherapy holistic is because I bring that other side in that spiritual yeah. side, you know, cause you've done a lot of the healing. Like I have, you've done a lot of the healing. You don't want another talk therapist as such. Yes, mm -hmm. we do talk therapy, of course because we need to you know, but we actually take that talk therapy and go here. Then we can start reframing, and then that's when the transformations start happening. Mm. Beautiful. And that's it, because sometimes, as you said, we might think we're giving ourselves permission, or we might think we've been through all the development we need to. But one of my friends has a beautiful saying that you can't read the label from inside the jar. So when we're inside our own jar, you can't actually see what's happening from the outside. Only somebody from the outside can. And that's why people need either coaches or therapists or whatever. Even coaches and therapists need coaches and therapists. Yep. Because, Absolutely. you know, as I said, I'm a fabulous coach, but I'm not necessarily my best client and I need to be my best client. Yep. But rather than that, because I'm not necessarily going to call myself on my BS, right? But I will need somebody else to say, hey, okay. you're fooling yourself and, you know, you know that. I go, oh, my God, yes, I do. So, Or just to say, you know what, you need a hug. Because even though I might feel I need a hug, I might not be comfortable. I might think I'm copping out. So what you're just saying is about what you do for your clients is exactly what they need. Even the most 
um, self-aware and you know self-attuned person will at some point need someone else exactly. to help them to heal. It's yeah. you, we can do a lot of our own healing, but we need to have the the knowledge, the tool, or well, firstly the awareness, the knowledge, and the tools. But there comes a point then when you do need someone outside, exactly. and that's what somebody like you does so beautifully. Thank you, and that's exactly right. It it, it is, and I now have my psychologist is now also my supervisor. So yes, yeah, so I tap in with her. So like you said, exactly right. I've got to that point now where she's just there when I need her. And yeah, so thank you for that. Because it is, we will always, we can always learn something. We will still always need some form of support. And there's no shame in that. So no matter how, so listen, you know, who's watching this, no matter how healed you feel you are, no matter what, don't ever feel shame. They'll always be, because now you are creating your life. Yes. You are doing something different for yourself. You want to create adventure, joy, fun, whatever it might be. And you will need at times that, like you said, Alison, that person just gives you, they say, use the words, either a reframe or a gentle push or a slight challenge or, and the other beautiful thing is, which what you did for me earlier is a reflection back. Do you see how far you've come? And it could be this versus this, but sometimes this is what you need to hear my god i did do that because that was actually a big step in yeah. my in my growth and in my healing because the first step is always the hardest and if you don't take that first step you're not going anywhere so acknowledging that first step is absolutely what we all need so we have the courage or, or the hope or whatever we need to take the next step and the one after right. that and the one after that um and it's also about being you know completely responsible for who we are and for our lives rather than thinking somebody's going to come along and rescue me. You know, that whole business where we grow up with, you know, Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty, yes. whatever, get, getting rescued by the prince is just such garbage. You know, we then have this false sense of somebody else is going to come and rescue me from my tower. No, I have to be my own heroine. I have to rescue me. Doesn't mean I can't ask for help. In fact, that's part of what I need to do. Exactly. Say, exactly. hey, I can't do it by myself. Please help me. Yeah. And that's why they're beautiful people like you who are able to do that, to Thank provide you. the help and the love and the support and to see and hear and feel with the other person. Thank you. And I appreciate you. Thank you, my beautiful friend. I appreciate that because, and I let me tell you, everyone, as we're finishing, I still like to be, re would still like to be rescued at times. So rest assured, even though I get it all, sometimes I would love to be that sleeping beauty and go, oh, please. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> You know, I'm no, just it, exactly, and it doesn't mean so. That's that's a bit. I love it too, right? In fact, my partner talks about pink jobs and blue jobs, which is a bit of a joke, which one of his friends talks about. And it's not about being completely self sufficient. No, no man is an island. No woman either. We want to be women. We want to be pampered. We want to be sort of looked after. Yes. We want to be romance. That's part of who we are. That's part of our birthright, and there's no shame in that. You're lucky if you have it and just appreciate it. And I'm so lucky. I'm so glad you have it. Yes, thank you. You too. And this is such a beautiful way to end because I'm knowing us, we could carry on. So anyone, if you'd love to contact, well, no, anything more, I have all my details are in the description. As I said, Alison's will be coming up in a little while. So keep an eye out on that. So if you'd like to subscribe, so I'll take, come up, like to subscribe, you know, and any comments, You'd like one of us will get back to you, um, reach out. And just remember, you're not alone. There is life after trauma and you can be just beautifully, gloriously you. Thank you, Alison, for giving me this beautiful moment in time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.